relationships between unions, community organisations, religious organisations, educational organisations can help us win on issues that we can't win on our own and rebuild the power of community as a whole. And what we need from coalitions is two things. We need to help them to help us win on our issues, from workplace issues to social issues, so that we can build a better and more positive relationship with government. But we also need them to help strengthen our organisations, to enhance our long-term power, so we have a, a, a sustained influence back on the market and on, and on government. But it's one thing to know that coalitions are important, but as I was saying earlier, not all coalitions uh, were created equal. Uh, raise your hand if you've um, worked in coalition before. Right, so I'm very conscious that there are a lot of coalition experts in the room, and I'm not here to, to, try and, um, to try and take away from that experience. I too have worked in coalition, but I know that um, many of you would have worked in coalition for a longer period than I have. Um, and those who've worked in coalition would be f very familiar with the different kinds of experiences you can have in coalition. Coalitions can vary from uh, coalitions around events, such as the days of action that happen here in Ontario. They can be short-term or long-term. The Ontario Health Coalition is a very long-term coalition. It's been around for 15 years, for instance. They can be against issues, against privatisation or for issues. They can be local, provincial or national. But what we do need is ways to identify about how they're successful. And I uh, identify five principles of strong coalitions. And these lessons, I'm going to run through them briefly, but they're written up in a handout that's available on the website that's also going to be talked about in a workshop that I'm running this afternoon at 1.30. So if you're interested, they're, they're written up for you um, as well. And these are, these are sort of the lessons, some of, them, some of which are, are, are a bit countercultural, a bit different to what certainly I had been working, how I'd been practising in coalitions. So the first principle is less is more when it comes to coalitions. So I found that bigger isn't better. You know, the 60-person the coalition, like the Walk Against the War coalition, um, wasn't actually, uh, didn't actually produce the most powerful coalitions. Uh, that more organisations did not equal more power. What I found was that, um, in contrast, the Public Education Coalition that won this massive uh, million dollar reform had just two or three organisations. That actually in restricting membership and gaining a higher commitment uh, to the issues that they were working on and working with organisations that had greater self-interest in the issues that were being worked on, that there was much more power. The power in coalition is about the quality of organisations at the table and their commitment, not the quantity of organisations. And then it's about what you do with the less that makes it more. It's about building relationships and developing the issues together. You know, the, 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 the public education campaign didn't see the teachers come to the parents and say, let's work on my, our salaries campaign. Together, through an independent inquiry, they identified the issue of smaller class sizes that actually was in their mutual interests. Working on those issues together and being prepared to explore what they worked on together was critical to their success. And then it was also about being strategic about the less. Um, for the education coalition, it was about bringing parents principals and teachers together because they all had a direct interest in the education community. But for other coalitions, it might be about picking unusual partnerships. It's also about being conscious of who else in your city or municipality um, or province has power. You, know, you might want to ask yourself the question, uh, who has an interest in improving, say, its waste services and who has power in your city and town? using that as a criteria to be able to identify organisations that you may seek to work with in, in being able to, to, to sort of think about the question of less is more. The second principle of uh, successful coalitions is that individuals matter. You know, when we talk, think of coalitions, we think a lot about organisations, but actually the individuals inside of organisations are critical. The Public Education Coalition is demonstrative. It was leaders of the unions, the community organisations, spending the presidents, not junior staff, making the time to prioritise this work. That's how it became central. 
They were the ones who went to meetings. They were the ones who built the relationships. But it's not just about leaders. It's not just about having coalitions based out of Ottawa or based out of, uh, out of Toronto. It was also about the, the decentralised participation. It was also about having champions inside of organisations and also about having members involved in active in these coalitions as well. And the other element was that there was a coalition coordinator. The Public Education Coalition, one of its weaknesses in some ways, was dominated by the union. It had lots of union resources and in the end, the domination of the union saw the coalition fall apart after the, the class sizes campaign finished. But one of the things that held those relationships together was Tony Vinson, the independent inquiry head. He was a coordinator between the relationships, helped to manage tensions between the parents and the, and the teachers. And a coalition coordinator, I continue to find when I looked at coalitions, was a really important element of successful coalitions. The third lesson is that successful coalitions build an agenda. I was very familiar with coalitions that were very good at saying no and not very good at saying what they wanted. Um, very good at being against privatisation as opposed to necessarily being for specific reforms to, that were in the interest of members for, um, for public service reforms, progressive reforms rather than regressive reforms. I found the best way to build a proactive agenda was to, to work on doing two things at once. One is for the organisations in the coalition to, to use their self-interest but to wield their self-interest with a sort of justice. Coalitions aren't about being altruistic. We're, we actually need to work on our own issues and interests and core concerns if we're really going to engage our membership on these issues. But it's not ju about just acting on self-interest. You know, when the teachers were working on salaries in the 1990s, they were being pummeled by the government for, just, for, for being only about teachers, being only about their vested interests. The way in which they were able to translate their self-interest to, to bear a sword of justice was connecting their interests in public education with the interests of other stakeholders in the education community. It was when the teachers combined with parents and explored what they had in common that they found class sizes. And class sizes was an issue that resonated. It was in their self-interest, but it was also in the public interest because it was in the interest of other education, education partners. Critical to being able to move a positive agenda and, and shift the political climate um, was also about running positive demands. They weren't running a campaign that was against the Building the Future report. They were running a campaign that was for reducing class sizes. Those positive demands had a broad frame. It was all about improving public education. But improving public education or, or quality public services has no meaning unless it's also made quite specific and tangible. And for them, it was about um, reducing class sizes. We need to be able to take these umbrella messages that we have, which are very, very important, and make them quite specific, tangible, winnable demands if we're actually going to be able to concretely improve the public services that we're working within. The other element of building an agenda was the power of having a spokesperson that was separate from the union. Tony Vinson carried the message of the teachers without looking like he was in the vested interest of the teachers. And when we, when we work in coalition, we can be creative about who can speak for us and having other people who can speak for us can exercise tremendous power. Principle four, sort of obvious. You've got a plan to make these things successful. The, the Public Education Coalition was incredibly well planned. It was very long term. They had a two year plan. They were conscious of when electoral opportunities were going to arise. They were aware that it was in the lead up to an election that they were going to have power. So they did an inquiry that lasted uh, 15 months and then had nine months of reporting and lobbying and public pressure to be able to win their, um, their specific demands. It was, it was all about conscious planning. And then five, is about taking multi-scaled action. What I mean by multi-scaled is that political power operates at different levels. You have national uh, negotiations with uh, our, our national politicians, provincial, regional, city, even more local. And the most powerful, most, most of our issues operate on multiple scales. That means our coalitions also need to be, we need to be organised in coalition at multiple scales. We need to be able to be acting at coalition across our locals, as well as being coordinated across 
our, our, our provinces and across and across the country. And they did that in, in Sydney. They, they had the hearings that went across individual locals and individual towns, but over a 15 month period that added up to being to amounting to influence across the across the state. Um, Multi-scale power is incredibly important, but it also requires a level of sophistication. It's not about having, in, in the case of Australia, a Sydney shouting out to the provinces, telling everyone what to do next week and the week after. It's also about having, allowing, uh, ensuring that locals and and the different the cities had some local autonomy, that they were in charge of being able to work out when the hearings were going to occur and what they were going to look like, what issues were important to them. So it's about about ensuring that there was a sort of a feedback loop between the local and the central rather than just the, the central telling the local what to do. So what does all this mean for, for, for unions? What, what do these lessons mean? I want to just draw out two thoughts, two parting thoughts. The first is, is that um, we have to be a bit sophisticated about what it means to build successful coalitions, because successful coalitions achieve multiple goals. We tend to think, I used to tend to think, that you could measure a coalition by whether it won. It's successful if it wins and it's unsuccessful if it doesn't. But the truth is, is the independent inquiry into public education by itself didn't win anything. It was only the campaign that happened in the nine months after that delivered the victory for, for reduced class sizes. Social change is also produced when it doesn't just win outcomes, but where there's a shift in the political climate. When you're actually reading the, the political environment to be able to be more receptive to, to your victories. But also social change really on its own isn't enough for building successful coalitions. If we have a coalition, like in the Teachers Federation case, you can, we need to be able to bring or build organisational strength. And one of their weaknesses was that they weren't able to sustain relationships with the other organisations. They kept it together with the school, with their parents while they were running the class sizes campaign, but those relationships broke down after that campaign had completed. And we need to be able to try and work out how we can work in coalition in a way that can either su can sustain relationships. That may mean um, staying in coalition together it may also mean disbanding coalitions and being prepared to form new coalitions on new issues as they arise. But being able to build coalitions that can sustain relationships, build, maintain friendly relationships and networks is important. But also successful coalitions are about building member strength. Coalitions aren't just about a few leaders or staff people hanging out with other organisations in the community, but it's about having participation at multiple levels, about ensuring that, that local teachers and parents were able to come together and plan how they could defend education in their own community. The second, the second key lesson that I've learnt um, and taken back to my organising in Sydney is that unions need to work with community organisations, not just tell them what to do. And as, as a union organiser, I was very familiar with the idea of, of having coalitions where, where unions were the ones who were the proponents of, of the action. But the truth is, is that when the union, when the, when the Teachers Federation tried to have a coalition around salaries, it didn't work. It actually was only when the union and the, te and the parents were able to come together and negotiate issues and work out what they had in common together to build a relationship first and then to work out what issues were going to work for them that they could actually form a long lasting relationship. And not only a long-lasting relationship, one where they could share power. Because the beauty of having an issue where parents actually had self-interest, where the parents wanted the outcome, was that they were prepared to use their own power to get it. They were prepared to do lots of media. They were prepared to, to, to turn people out to events and, and, and forums and rallies. They were prepared to lobby politicians. They were prepared to speak on behalf of the interests of teachers because they had a stake in the outcomes too. And we can only achieve this when we're working with our community partners and negotiating with our community partners. And it also is about thinking differently about what our issues are. You know, they were, the, the New South Wales Teachers Federation were creative enough to be able to think about workplace issues such as workload as a, as a class sizes campaign. So the beauty of the independent inquiry was that it was able to surface lots of stories that allowed people to think differently about their issues. 
um, rather than, than seeing things through the straitjacket of uh, union interests to explore what those, those issues could be with their community partners, help them articulate um, demands that resonated with the public at large. Oh, yeah.